Well, we're turning to a subject that we thought maybe had been sorted out. Uh, in fact, at the moment, the last interview I did with Eric Corkish, who's now joining us, uh, Eric, you're number one in the most viewed videos of the last 28 days at the moment. Uh, you were with us talking about the situation with the buses again, and since then, you've taken things another step further. Would you like to tell us what's happened? Yeah, um, yesterday morning I decided that uh, things weren't moving very quickly and uh, getting a few negative comments about it. So I decided to hold a protest at the bus station in Douglas and I went up to the driver of the vehicle, asked him would he let me on and he said no. So I told him, well, I'm going to hold a protest and I put my mobility buggy in front of the bus so it couldn't get past me. So you, you actually caused the bus to miss its, well, you couldn't leave, I'm guessing, right? Yes, I I made sure, because I know by using the buses, that I didn't do it at a peak time where I was affecting a lot of people. Uh, it was the quarter to 12, number three bus going to Ramsey. Uh, he refused me entry, so I parked in front of the bus so the bus could not move. And just while I'm saying that, I'd like to apologise to the people who were on the bus, who were held, held up for approximately 10 minutes. I tried to make it as short as possible because I didn't want to disrupt other people's lives. Now, th this event um, interested the police, I think, in the end, and they came down. Yes, uh, well, I spoke to the bus driver and he said that uh, I couldn't get on the bus and I told him I was going to protest. He, he said to me, well, you know where this is going, I'm going to call the police. So the his bosses would call the police. So I just said to him, well, fair enough, if that's what happens. And I was being interviewed, the BBC were there, uh, and they were filming what was going on, and Manx Radio were there, and seeing what was going on, you know. And uh, then whilst we did the BBC interview, and then while it's in the middle of the interview uh, with Manx Radio, which was being filmed as well, uh, a woman appeared, I wouldn't have known she was a police officer because she wasn't in a uniform, she didn't tell me who she was, she didn't show me a warrant card, and she asked me to move away from the front of the bus so that the bus could continue with its journey and said so I was uh, causing an obstruction of a public highway. So I moved onto the pavement as soon as she said that, which, you know, I obeyed what she wanted to do. But there's been a thing on your Facebook saying that they sh they've suggested you couldn't use some of that material or something because I've I've since yes. checked with the police and they they said that was wrong. You know the press can film in a, in a public place. As, so what was going on yes. there? Well, the at that moment I don't know whether BBC were filming or not, but certainly Manx Radio were filming what the police woman was saying to me. Uh, and as soon as she had finished talking to me, she spoke to the two girls from Max Radio and said that they could not publish what they had just filmed while a police officer was talking to me uh, and that it was illegal to film a police officer uh, for to use on any uh, social media, if you like, or right. on the news. But I, I wasn't quite sure, but I let it go away with that and the the girls from Manx Radio stopped recording and they have not used what the policewoman said in the interviews that they put onto the radio. Well, I contacted Gavin Callow about this as soon as I saw your post and he says that isn't right, you can film, so obviously somebody needs to maybe have a bit more training on those sort of issues. Well, I got, I got a different answer to what you got because I went into the Ramsey Police Station today and asked, was that correct, that you cannot film a police officer? Uh, and the policeman in there, who I haven't got no idea who it was, advised me he could not give me uh, any instructions on that and give me the number of the police station in Douglas. So when I got home, I, I rang the police station in Douglas and the answer I got, again, I don't know who I was talking to because they just put you through different people, was uh, if a police officer did not want to be filmed while doing her duty or his duty, whichever, and that you were not, if she asked you not to use it, you were not allowed to use it. 
Well, as I said, um, as far as I'm concerned, and what Gavin Callow said, it, it's, it's, it's uh, something that can be done. Otherwise, we'd be living in a police state, probably. Anyway. Yeah, back well, I'm, I, I'm hoping now to get a meeting with Manx Radio on Monday because there was a statement put out very late on Friday uh, making all sorts of accusations from the government, but they did not name which government department it was. Then they said that uh, their statement, they read out the statement, that mobility buggies cannot be carried on a bus because they're deemed to be unsafe. Because if, if the bus driver has to brake heavily, the mobility buggy will fly down the bus and hit somebody. Now that is a downright lie, because the mobility buggies fit in the same space as where the wheelchairs go. There's a backstop in that space which allows that if a bus driver has to brake suddenly, the buggy or pram or wheelchair is against the back of the bus, which would stop it moving. Now, that, what they have said is a complete and utter lie that a mobility buggy can, can move and injure other passengers. You know, and it is just not true. Eric, you've been in touch with various members of Parliament. Um, I think you've obviously been to the top, you've done some MHKs, where are you up to now? Are you getting anywhere with this? Because it's quite concerning, I think, for a lot of people watching this, how what appeared to be over and sorted is now going vastly backwards for you, certainly, and causing um, you some distress and other people probably question what they can do now. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in a situation where Minister Thomas has said that he will look into the situation uh, and that, according to him, he will get this sorted by the by March, is what he said on the man line the other day. Um, you know, and and I can only take it. I said I would keep him to his word, but uh, you know, he uh, he may come up and answer. But the way I see it now is, from what I've learned from the people I've spoke to, is that Longworth. And I don't mind using his name because it is purely him, in my opinion, that is stopping this. When when Mr. Bates was in charge, when uh, Longworth was supposed to be retired, uh, he set up this trial. He was quite happy that this would work. Now, Longworth, to me, appears to be going down. I think his way out of this now is going to be health and safety. But it's it's absolute rubbish because the, the mobility buggies are being carried on buses in England. And if the government don't believe how far this is going, about an hour ago, I got a call from a person in Wales who told me that Arriva, who run all the buses in Wales, allow mobility buggies on them. Okay. So I, I don't really know how much bad publicity the Isle of Man wants. But, you know, they, they are actually stopping the disabled person from using the public service. And in the Equality Act, it completely says that any service provider is not allowed to, pre to provide a less service to a disabled person than they do to an able-bodied person. Just to finish with, are you going to do anything more or are you going to wait for some uh, official correspondence now? You're not going to be blockading more buses? I don't intend to, and I am hoping that earlier this week I spoke on the man in line, and Chris Thomas, it was actually last week, not this week, Chris Thomas was on, and he has promised me that he will try and sort this problem out, and he said he will try and sort it out by March. Now, I'm hoping they stick to his word, you know, but, uh, you know, what, what can I do? I'm, I'm only waiting on him. And if, if you listen to what the policewoman said, that if I do do another demonstration, that I will, by all accounts, be arrested and I'll be taken to court for obstructing a highway. Well, I have no intention of obstructing the highway again. I don't actually believe I did because I don't believe that part of the bus station is a public highway. But I'm not going to argue that case. When she asked me to move, I moved. And as far as I'm concerned now, somebody needs to get a grip of this because 
as I said, somebody from Wales has contacted me tonight telling me that Arriva buses carry mobility scooters. Now, how much bad publicity do the Isle Man want? You know, if, if this doesn't happen, if it's not sorted out shortly, I do another demonstration, I'm going to end up in court. And, and if I continue for it, I could end up in prison. Now, does the Isle Man government want the publicity of having a disabled person uh, being prosecuted, possibly sent to prison for the right to travel on a bus like all able-bodied people do. How much bad publicity do they want? <laughs>